Hi there, uh, my name is Mr Lewis. This is a video for parents of Upton School or prospective parents if you're thinking of joining us all about our new approach to lunch times. Um, so we've gone through quite a significant change uh, this academic year. We're only five, six weeks into it. So um, it's still very new to us, but I wanted to talk you through some of the things we've changed, why we've changed them and what we hope to achieve by the changes we've made. Uh, unfortunately, at the moment, we're not in a position where we can have um, big gatherings with parents in the hall because we'd love to do an information session with you because I think it's really really important you understand why we're making changes to our lunch times but we're not in a position to do that right now so I'm going to use zoom to do a video that you can then um, we can put on the website and you can have a look at your own um, leisure time now one of the reasons we've made such a big change is because we're looking to try and make lunch times more exciting for our children that's the biggest aim here we want children more engaged more excited more active um, and that's what we're hoping for. And a lot of it's been based on some research which we've done, which I'm going to show you here from the early education. Now, um, this was a paper they wrote called Taking Risks in Play. You can go and see the whole paper yourself on the British Association for Early Childhood Education. I won't read all of this to you, um, but we want children to take some risks. That's the, the, um, the underpinning kind of theory behind it. We don't want children... Uh, just being sort of moved around from zone to zone like it's been the last couple of years with COVID um, and being very limited in where they can go and very limited in where they can explore. We want them using our whole school grounds, but that comes with risk. Uh, and it says in bold there, the aim for us as adults and as teachers should not be to eliminate all risk, but to weigh up the risks and benefits. No child will learn about risk if they're wrapped in cotton wool. Um, obviously, the risks that we take have to be manageable and we have to think that it's a safe enough risk for them to do. Um, and it's why towards the end it says about risk benefit. Uh, we've got a document, it's on the website, which you can see called our risk benefit document. Uh, it's not called a risk assessment because we accept there are some risks to playtimes because children are running around, moving around, and there's upwards of 350 children outside. So we accept there are some risks but the benefits that come from it are hugely outweighing the risks that we put in place. Clearly, we are not gonna let children put themselves into actual danger. Um, and if that was to ever happen, we would make changes. Um, but we want children to take some minor risks. It does say that risk taking is good for children. So we want children to have things like bumps, scrapes, bruises, those sort of things are part of growing up, part of understanding what you are and aren't capable of and how to manage your body. Um, so we do what we, we don't want to avoid all of those things, but clearly the risks that we take have got to be manageable. Um, this is brand new to us. We are only five or six weeks in. We will make some mistakes. Um, so, you know, for parents, please work with us. We're trying to make lunchtime the best possible experience for children, but we are going to make some mistakes along the way. Um, and we'll need your support and help with that. We're not trying to say it's going to be perfect. Um, this early on. We're working with a school called St Peter's School, which is uh, the Catholic school near the hospital. They've been running this programme for a couple of years now, um, so they call it OPAL. Uh, we call it CAPS, Children's Access to Play in Schools, um, and they've seen some huge benefits, but they did say there's some teething problems in the first few months, so no doubt we will encounter some problems along the way. Um, what do we aim to achieve? Uh, we aim to achieve these things. We want to increase children's wellbeing, we want to increase the enjoyment and children's happiness. We want to reduce the number of negative behaviour incidents that arise from unstructured playtimes. We want to offer a wide range of zones for children to play. We want it to be inclusive, so we want all children in the school to feel part of it. Uh, we want children to develop life skills, so this is more than just academic skills. Play is an important part of school life. We want them to develop those life skills. We want them to improve social language and communication skills. We want the children to use the outdoor space. We want them to use it as a natural resource. We want them to learn and play in all the areas. We're so lucky here. We've got some great grounds um, compared to some schools who sometimes they've only got a small playground. We've got huge grounds, grass grounds, forest school area, mud areas. We want the children using it all. Um, and we want to ensure that the outdoor area offers the children the opportunity to investigate and explore, problem solve, use their imagination, rather than just simply being told what to do and what they can play. Um, now, that's a big, big change from where we used to be as a school, even in the pre-COVID days, where 
generally children had access to certain parts of the field and playground, but were very limited in what they could actually do there. Um, and so you typically would find lots of children playing ball games uh, or playing some kind of playground game such as tag, something like that. We're trying to move children beyond that. We also want children to do those traditional playground games and we have an area on our playground for traditional games. But we want to take children into areas where maybe the current generation of children don't get so much time doing. Um, so if I go to the zones, it, it's very unlikely or not. It's very rare now that we see children spending lots of time in mud and forest areas outside of school. So uh, we know children now spend a lot more time on screens. We know children spend a lot more time indoors. And so we're trying to use our lunch times as a way to address that. So some of, these are some of the zones that we've currently got. These will change and evolve throughout the year um, as we find out which zones are popular, which zones are not so popular, with which age range um, children generally want to be in. Uh, these will evolve. But we've got a dressing up and role play area. We've got a giant sand pit, which I'm sure pet parents have seen as they walk around the school. When we had the one-way system last year, you, you had to go past the sand pit. We've got a bikes, trikes and scooter zone. That's new and that's only just established. Um, and so far, that's incredibly popular with the children. So children can bring their scooters to school, can go on the scooters, can go on trikes. Um, so this is brand new. We've never had something like this before. We are now slowly trying to introduce bikes as well. So if children bring their bike to school, you can, they can ride their bike in a set zone. Um, we do uh, make sure children are wearing helmets for bikes. Uh, at the moment, we don't uh, use helmets for scooters. Um, and, and the reason for that is having done some research with St Peter's School, uh, we actually didn't feel the need to do um, helmets for scooters because the children were not able to, to get up to any kind of high speeds because they're in such a restricted zone. Uh, we didn't feel it was any different to them sprinting. In fact, most children could run quicker than they could scoot. So we didn't feel the need for helmets for scooters, but we do um, make sure children have got helmets for bikes. Um, children are welcome to bring their own helmets. We also have a supply of school helmets. Um, for the bikes. We have a skipping zone, so we've put quite a lot of um, support with staff and the lunchtime staff over the last couple of years into skipping. We've had someone called Dan the Skipping Man who comes out and does some skipping workshops with us, so we're trying to get skipping going as a regular lunchtime activity. We've got a mud kitchen, a music zone, so children can dance. We've got um, one of those outdoor music speakers. Uh, a sports zone, so that has been hockey. Uh, it's currently netball. Um, so that will change and evolve as times move on. We've got our, our anomaly screen, which is a screen out on the playground where children can play interactive games on the screen. We've got a den building and digging zone, which is currently very, very popular, particularly with some of our year five, six children at the moment. Um, so they can go and build dens and dig into the mud. Uh, we have a couple of quiet zones. So we've got the spiritual garden and the octagon zone, which is where we expect children to be nice and quiet, and the secret garden pond area. The adventure playground, which a big, big thanks to some parent volunteers last year who helped uh, install that. We took that from the school in Stroud and installed it here. And we also have the library, so if children would prefer to come indoors and just quietly read, then they've got the library as an option. Um, now, what children really, really have to have in school is water with coats and wellies. Um, without that, they're not going to be allowed access to all parts of the field. Uh, we're OK now in October time because it's still quite dry. But once we get into November, December, January, February, we will not be allowing children into the muddy areas without wellies and water of coats. So if they haven't got a pair of wellies and water of coats, their potential experience will be limited. So please, please get a pair of wellies. Um, and a water of coat in school every day. Now, the ideal way for us to achieve this, we prefer if parents could donate a pair of wellies. Um, and therefore, then you wouldn't have to buy a pair of wellies every year for your child as they change shoe size. Um, instead, we would just have a supply of wellies in school and children can go up each lunchtime and just get the, the size that they are at that point in time. Um, if you don't want to do that and you want your child to have their own set pair of wellies, then obviously you can do that, but there's obviously a knock on cost to that because every, as your child changes shoe size, you're going to have to keep buying wellies. So we prefer if, uh, if, if people could donate a pair of wellies um, and then you wouldn't have to buy them year on year. Uh, we would also recommend that they've probably got some form of waterproof trousers or overalls. Um, just because we want to protect the uniform and um, we will allow children to go in the mud areas just wearing a coat and wellies. Um, but we would prefer if they also had some form of trousers and overalls, and that's just to protect your uniform. We don't want parents having to wash their uniform uh, every single day. That's just not manageable. Um, to give you a little bit of logistics around how we make it work, our lunch times are 11.45 to 12.45. 
reception come in slightly earlier just because they take a little bit more time to settle down and eat so we give them an extra 15 minutes to eat reception in year one get taken to the lunch hall they eat lunch together from year two upwards we're trying to develop independence with the children and it's working pretty well so far we had some teething problems the first few days but it's uh, a free flow nature children come in and eat at any point they want within the 50 minutes from 11 55 to 12 45 if for whatever reason they forget or are late we make sure there's a provision in place at 12 40 we make sure they've eaten um slightly different for sandwiches sandwiches if they want to whilst the weather's nice can eat outdoors but if they don't want to they can eat indoors um, it's not feasible for us as a school to check every single child who's eating their food there's 419 children on roll uh, however, if you know that your child isn't eating regularly and you see them coming home with a sandwich box, which they're not eating or they tell you they're not eating their full lunch, please just tell us and we'll put something in place to make sure that it, their lunch box or their plate has been checked before they finish lunch. Um, but it's it, unless we've got a list of names, that's really difficult. We can't check all 418 names. Um, we couldn't do that pre-COVID when we were all eating in the hall together. It's just not realistic for, for sort of three or four lunchtime staff in the hall to check everybody is eating. So if children are not eating, please let us know and we'll put something in place. Um, because th we've moved to this free flow system here, which is on the screen now. So children in year two have far more choice. So they can eat where they want, with who they want. Um, hopefully COVID doesn't stop that in the sense that we haven't got to go back to year group bubbles or class bubbles. But like many of the changes we've done or introduced, it's to try and make children more independent, try and give children a lot more choice around when they do things and how they do it. Um, and they're not reliant then on a teacher or a parent to tell them how to do everything. Um, sandwiches can eat outdoors. It was lovely back a few weeks ago when the weather was quite warm in September. We had children out on the grass eating in little picnic kind of circles. And it was really nice. It was a lovely atmosphere. As the weather starts to turn, obviously, no doubt children will start to come indoors to eat their lunch. Um, and that's completely fine. We want children indoors if they want to be indoors, um, but also if they want to eat outdoors, they can. That's completely up to them. So the benefits we're already seeing a few weeks in from this, it, we're getting through children quicker. There's less queuing up, um, and that's been a big thing for us this year. We want to avoid children queuing up, lining up at all points in the day. So we're seeing less queuing up, less lining up, um, less time wasted, children playing more, children active more, which is exactly what we want. Um, if you have got any questions about the eating side of things, please just speak to us and we'll, we'll put something in place. Um, and what we're already seeing is an improvement in behaviour. We're seeing less and less issues of negative behaviour outside um, at lunchtimes. Lunchtime is an unstructured time of the day. Some children find that quite difficult because you haven't got an adult necessarily watching you at all times. Uh, like you would have in a classroom environment where you've got a set lesson so it's unstructured but we're already seeing so far uh, less issues we're working off the principle that if we can keep children engaged and excited and wanting to be outdoors playing then we'll hopefully have less issues to deal with and therefore we'll hopefully have less things that we need to contact parents with um, in terms of how our, our adults at school um, will stick to behavior we'll stick to the policy so the policy is the same whether you're indoors or outdoors we are looking for children to do our three school rules or follow our three school rules which is ready respectful and safe um, and we use our e system which very shortly you will get access to as a parent so you can then see now mr merritt oversees lunchtime so if a child does misbehave or if a child does something exceptionally well at lunchtime uh, mr merritt might give them gold and silver awards or equally he might give them um a demerit so you'll get that on your epraise uh, e login when you get that login you can see a demerit means they've not stuck the children haven't stuck to our rules and you'll see what they've done and, and what's happened there okay um now we sent home a list and we've got two boxes at the front and back of the school we are looking for as many objects as possible and they might appear to be quite random objects when you look at this but we're looking for all sorts because any item as long as it's used correctly can be can be effective in play um, and all the research tells us actually for younger children particularly we don't want to give them lots of ready-made play activities we want to just give them things and they decide how to play and how to make use of it um, so there's a huge list of objects on there from all sorts of things role play to toy cars and toys through to things for our sand pit all the way up to things that we want for our construction and vehicle area um, so we're looking for all sorts if you can donate 
anything, it would be gladly um, taken. We have got our boxes at the front and rear of school to leave things, or if you're bringing in something too big that won't fit in that, please just let us know and we can get it used at playtimes. So there's a huge number of things on that list. We're also looking for um, things for our wheel area. So our bikes, trikes, scooters on, you know, if you've got old bikes, which um, are uh, too small now for your children or scooters, we would really, really appreciate any donations of things for our wheels on. And then lastly, we also are looking for wellies, as I've said earlier on, if you can donate wellies, um, you know, roughly in sort of children's sizes, um, that would be really useful for us because we can get children using them and not needing to buy wellies all the time. Um, if you have any questions about anything through our new lunchtime, please email me or come and speak to me. Um, as I said at the very beginning, we need your support with this as parents. We're going to encounter some teething problems along the way. There's no one trying to say this is going to be perfect. Um, but we firmly believe that if we get this right, um, you know, over the coming years, we are going to have a far more positive lunchtime experience for our children, a far more exciting and engaging experience for our children. Um, and a, an experience which is manageable in terms of the risk. We want children to take risks. We are very open in that. We are not trying to remove all risk, but it has to be manageable. And if we see something isn't working, we won't hesitate to change that. Um, but we do want children to be taking risks and exploring what they can and can't do and managing um, their own body. So please look out for things that we'll put in the newsletter um, about changes we're making, please look for this page on the website. This page is being added to all the time. You can see the, the CAS, CAPS risk benefit document. So you can see the changes that we'll be making. So it's a live document which we'll update every few weeks. Um, and you can see how we're trying to manage the risk um, because we, we do accept there's 418 children at school. During that lunch hour, the vast majority of them are gonna be outdoors. Um, and therefore we, we are gonna have some bumps, scrapes, bruises, um, but we also believe going back to that research at the start, that is part of growing up as long as it's managed. Mm -hmm. So if you've got any questions, please do speak to me um, and I'll be happy to help. All right. Thank you for watching. And please keep an update on uh, an eye on this page website for any further updates to do with our lunchtime provision. Thank you.